Uh, that's a four panel summary of my 40 minute talk. So if you want to leave now, go for it. It's Wednesday morning. I wouldn't be here except I'm speaking. So tired, sleepy. I went to bed at 10, but I'm still sleepy. Uh, but yeah, I wish DevOps were this easy, you know? Like, but hey, depression memes. So I'm going to talk a lot about mental health. So I thought I would start with some boilerplate. So here's a boiler. Uh, <laughs> I think last year at Lisa, Jeffrey Snover or someone talked about boilers, and I decided to include a little reference to that. But yeah, boilerplate. So my views are my own. There's this newfangled thing called LinkedIn. You can look me up. I'm extremely young, uh, and my employment history is a grand total of three employers. So, uh, but still, like I'm not here on behalf of my employer. Whatever, I, whatever stupid shit I say is mine. Uh, so don't go around saying, hey, this guy, a dollar employer, uh, whatever, you know, uh, don't make too much of it. And I'm sure there's no reporters here, so who gives a fuck? But yeah, uh, so I'm going to talk a lot about mental health today. And for those of you who aren't aware, uh, let me tell you, there's a difference between the common cold and asthma. Uh, I know I've had asthma all my life. Uh, and it's not quite the common cold where you drink chicken soup and get all right, I guess. Uh, so similarly, there's a, there's a difference between being sad and being depressed. Uh, there's a difference between being worried and being anxious. There's a difference between being distracted and having ADHD. I have ADHD. I have autism. Uh, sorry, I am autistic. Uh, that's the right way to say that. Uh, but uh, I've had those things all my life, so I have a little bit of first-hand experience with them. Uh, when I first started writing the CFP for this talk, I decided it will be deep and dark and tragic and sorrowful. Uh, so I added a content warning. It isn't that way because I was in a good mood yesterday while I wrote this talk, so uh, there's not much depression memes in this. I'm sorry, you can leave now. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm apologizing for being in a good mood. What the, like, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So weird, but, uh, uh, so anyway, I'm still going to talk about some sensitive topics, so at any point, if you feel like you are being affected, uh, please feel free to leave. I won't think any worse of you. This is Wednesday morning, like I said, last day of the conference. Uh, but more boilerplate. I might sound angry and frustrated for very good reasons, often during this talk, uh, I already said the bit about my employment history. Uh, I also want to add, I'm going to bitch about some ex-employers, but I don't hate any of them. So any recruiters here, please fuck off. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was going to say please no, but I'm tired. Uh, I cherish my time at each employer, you know? Like, I'm, I'm not saying this as like some vacuous, empty bullshit, but uh, I actually liked a lot of the people I worked with, and I find at least learning opportunities were received. Uh, I learned a little, I think. But yeah, so this talk is about my toolbox. I still haven't started, note that it's still all meta. But I'm going to tell you about all of the tools that I found or I assembled. I can't give you a toolbox, though. You need to assemble your own. If you feel like you don't need one, that's all right. Uh, good for you. I wish I were like you. But uh, you can help people around you find their own toolboxes. There are dozens of us. Dozens. Uh, that's a very good reference, if I say so myself, to uh, Arrested Development, I think, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, there are several neurodivergent people in the world. You work with some of them, I can guarantee that. But I don't speak for all of us, so don't think, hey, Annie said autism looks like this, so here's what autism looks like, and you're not autistic. Don't do that shit. Uh, this talk is rated D for descriptive, not P for prescriptive. I might sound like I'm telling you what to do, but I'm not. Do it yourself. Uh, but yeah, hey, I'm starting now. My name's Annie. I use they and he pronouns. I came out yesterday. Uh, but I've been a production engineer since, thank you. I've been a production engineer since summer 2015, so many years. Uh, but yeah, so PE is like being an SRE but better, which I hear is like being DevOps but better. Uh, I have read the SRE book. It's a bunch of crap. But 
uh, SRE bitching aside, I'm going to start with a platinum tier enterprise grade roadmap that has a dragon at the end. So that's my roadmap. I'm going to rant a lot because I do that. Uh, so I'm going to start by talking about being new, where I'll rant about job interviews because, you know, they are so delightful. I have so much fun, like that lightning talk speaker yesterday. Uh, job interviews are great. I'm then going to talk about time, where I'll get all metaphysical and rant about capitalism, which is one of my hobbies. Uh, ranting about capitalism, not capitalism itself. But I'm actually going to talk about bibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. Uh, no, I'm going to talk about managing time, managing projects, managing your managers, even some of my eldritch powers. Uh, but yeah, uh, then I'm going to talk about burnout. I am burned out right now, uh, not because of my employer. I'll keep saying that. But I'll continue ranting about capitalism here because, you know, we don't deserve to have to work in order to live out an existence we didn't ask for. But uh, capitalism sucks. So I'm going to talk about burnout, though. And then I'm going to talk about help, where, I don't know, I'll rant about bubble baths, I guess, because just because. Uh, but I'll talk about uh, asking for help and looking for help within yourself, uh, how I managed to do that. And then just for, I believe, the sports metaphor is a curveball. I'll talk about toes. I'm not going to tell you what that last topic is because it's Smog the Dragon. But uh, I, could, I guess I could say I'm keeping you on your toes there. Uh, <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Wednesday. But yeah, being new. I think we've all been new at some point, right? We passed goddamn job interviews. Uh, we all dropped production databases on a region master by pasting commands into the wrong terminal. During peak traffic hours, taking down all of the East Coast operations. Wait, I'm getting specific. But I, uh, yeah, someone did that, not me. Uh, I'm a really good SRE. I, I would never do such a thing. But uh, we all know what it's like to be new, right? So why the fuck is it still so hard for people to be new? We have so much collective knowledge. Why aren't we helping our noobs? I'm going to talk about me being new. I went to grad school in New York, and I took a job in the Bay Area. Uh, which meant I had to relocate, which was a bewildering experience because Eddie's ice cream is suddenly Dreyer's. It has the same packaging. Like, what the fuck is going on there? Uh, there's no Pathmark. Apparently, Pathmark shut down, so that reference is dated. But uh, there's like a big box called Safeway. What? And people drive cars? Like, why would you put yourself through that? But, uh, god damn. And there's no electricity now. Uh, but yeah, the bigger problem for me was isolation. Uh, that's Mean Girls. Uh, I forget her name, but she's being kicked out of a circle that she wants to join. I think. I haven't actually seen the movie in many years. But uh, I, was, I felt very isolated in my first job because I was the only new hire. Uh, I didn't, I'm a social person. I like talking to people. I'm ambiverted, so I don't like talking to people that much either. But I do like it. I didn't get any social time for months, for literally months, not even lunch time, because my colleagues were either too busy or they formed tight cliques. And I have no idea how to get in because I am autistic and I have always been thrown out of groups all my life for being weird. So I have no idea how to say, hey, do you mind inviting me to your lunch circle? Because I don't know how to do that. Send me a Google Calendar invite, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Um, and I just ate alone for so long. Uh, at one point during my second week or third week, I think, I realized already that this was wrong. This felt weird. It was wrong. Uh, and I managed to ask a coworker to go to lunch with me. Uh, but that asshole ditched me midway while I was still eating because he had to go do some work. I found him at his desk later. He wasn't on call. He wasn't responding to an incident. He was just uh, looking at Facebook, uh, which sucks. Like, who, why the fuck would anyone do that? Like, you're a new hire. You desperately want company. You ask someone, like, why aren't people thinking of that? Uh, and, you know, like, we are just 
we are not cogs and wheels like we are more than that we are human beings uh, we have lives and hopes and dreams and ambitions but we spend the majority of our waking hours at work because that's what capitalism is uh, anyway uh, i feel like not enough employers seem to invest hard in asking their new hires what their lives are like and finding out more about them than just what kind of work are they capable of doing uh, questions like are you settling in okay are you finding the bay area comfortable how's life did you find a house to rent are you managing to find social circles and friends and stuff i was never asked any of that and that felt weird uh, it took me a lot of time and a job switch from employer number 2 to employer number 3 where i work now to actually feel like i belonged which is weird right like it took me 2 years i passed some really hard job interviews because uh, my employers interviews are hard uh, but at the end of it i got an actual mentor who was assigned to me who cared about my existence as a human being and helped me settle into the job it was bewildering but i had a safe spot to talk to to ask questions of but before that i wasted a whole lot of my life trying to be the best and trying to show that i as a new hire have what it takes instead of just relaxing and realizing that hey i'm new i'll learn it eventually and i have people to take care of me i failed to take the time to get life right and that's because no one was kind to me at my first job but hey that's a meme so i'm memeing now uh but like try to remember that all of your new hires are human beings you know like they came from somewhere you know like they have lives they have favorite foods they care about in and out was a shake shack uh they're humans and so like try being kind to them it may work better uh from there i'm going to jump very abruptly into talking about time i've been just in time all of my life uh i've always done work at the last minute whether it's homework during school or projects during college or studying i always did it the night before which was fine at my first job uh because i was working tech support and once a ticket was out of my hands i didn't have to think about it anymore but at my first job because i did everything last minute i didn't really know how to have vision i knew that there were roles like senior engineer and architect but i had no idea how to get there and people kept asking me questions like where do you see yourself n years from now and this happened at job interviews but nothing had ever prepared me to answer such a question like i'm from india and uh it's a very indian thing to ask your kids beta do you want to be an engineer or a doctor you decide and very often it gets decided for you at birth when they look between your legs and see whether you have this or that and they're like yeah this one's going to be an engineer because it has that plumbing and uh, that really sucked i did not know how to think about my life and the future about what my hopes and ambitions and dreams were because no one ever talked to me about that and as a result i feel at my current employer i was really struggling as a new hire even though i had a mentor and everything but what saved me in my struggle was a manager who i'm going to call lemon uh yes he was they were a cool manager and uh we did team stand ups which was nice i actually like stand ups i'm one of those rare engineers who likes that and asks for it on teams that don't have it but lemon saw a pattern in my updates during stand up and let's see if you can identify the pattern too my updates were of the pattern i'm still trying to figure this one thing out i'm blocked on this thing this one thing is in my way i'm i have no update i'm still working on this i'm still doing this and that went on for weeks at a time guess what i was struggling uh 
but what saved me was lemon wasn't just present at stand up like the rest of my team was and waiting for you know it's like a youtube watch party you don't care what other people's videos are you just wait for yours to be played and that's an xkcd reference if you didn't get it uh xkcd is this like really hipster comic that i'm not sure if any of you know about it but uh, <laughs> I, i think it's a little mainstream now but uh Yeah, Lemon wasn't just present at stand-ups. They were looking at the bigger picture, and they were looking at what we were doing beyond just that one stand-up. And they identified that I was struggling. And until then, I was afraid of management because I had a hands-off manager at my first job, and I had a hands-off manager at my second job. But I was embedded in a team of Swiss, where I saw the manager. micromanage their swiss so hard i kid you not this fellow was sitting behind one of his engineers for 2 hours while that engineer was building a feature not even fixing an incident or anything just building a fucking feature 2 hours sitting behind him and like is that line right are you using the right variable here shouldn't you be like what so i was afraid of managers and uh, lemon was the sweet spot for me kind of goldy locksy but uh, Lemon also somehow intuited that I was terrified of failing, uh, and so they didn't tell me anything about PIPs, you know, that dreaded like three-letter acronym, performance improvement plan. Instead, they told me, "Hey, Annie, I have a plan to improve your performance. Guess what that becomes when you abbreviate it." But uh, they helped me out a lot. I'm not kidding. They're a great manager, and. Uh, their management style still needed some tailoring so it could optimally work for me so the key takeaway here is i helped train my manager a little bit i managed my manager we were already doing regular one on ones which is a great thing to do but i asked that we set agendas for those one on ones which helped me and find peace of mind uh, we were doing one on ones regularly but i also wanted some form of asynchronous communication so when things came up in my head i could just write them down in a document and we could address them during one on one or between one on ones that helped a lot uh i asked them to give me regular feedback uh earlier they were telling me hey ani i'm just going to tell you when you're doing badly i'm going to warn you but when you're doing great i'm just going to leave you as you are and you know the whole thing about training wheels and stuff i'm still on training wheels i need constant validation because i am desperate and sad and lonely even though i've been happily married for quite a few years now uh but i'm still like i i needed that validation of like and you're doing great you're still doing great you're continuing to do great and lemon did that which is amazing of them i would get boring for me uh saying the same kind of shit over and over again browsing a thesaurus before the one on one i don't know what they did but they did it uh, they gave me regular feedback whether it was good or not and uh, they followed up between one on ones which sounds like a really teeny thing to do but it's amazing how beautiful one on ones can be when they are stateful and not stateless but During those one-on-ones we never talked about project progress or how my feature was going or anything like that. We talked about my career growth mid and long term and we talked about my performance generically and not about hey are you managing to work on this feature. Which was great, you know, segmenting your one-on-ones like that is pretty useful at least for me. Uh all of the technical topics i moved to talking about with my tech lead i'm going to call them blossom until then we were having one on ones but blossom and i just talked about my herb gardens progress and their gluten free vegan baking experiments uh which was interesting it was really cool they managed to find a way to bind flour without using xanthan gum uh, but i'm not going to get into that i like baking bread but uh, i could give a 40 minute talk on that uh, next year but those one on ones were fun but not useful we made the one on ones useful and sometimes fun uh it was fine like i still could get social time outside of that but uh hey like one on ones are a great fucking tool to do everything i'm not going to tell you here's how to grow your career 
because remember this talk is a prescriptive one and not a sorry it's a descriptive one uh, d for damascus but uh, yeah uh, one on ones are great use them uh, from there i'm going to jump again abruptly into burnout which is a great topic i had a great manager i had a great lead and i was doing some amazing work i spoke about it at lisa and sricon last year i was so happy but i still burned out because I'm autistic, I have ADHD, and I also have a history of childhood trauma. I make a lot of jokes about that, even in therapy. But uh, my therapist somehow doesn't laugh. She seems on the verge of tears each time, which is weird. Uh, I, the response to humor is laughing, right? That's what humans do. Uh, but I mention all this because uh, it molded my character, and I am a habitual overachiever and i have really 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 strong uh, titanium clad imposter syndrome uh, and i do this asian parent mentality thing where if i got 99% there on a project uh, i don't celebrate that instead i dig for where did that 1% go why didn't i get 100% if i get an exceeds expectations rating i keep wondering why didn't i get a greatly exceeds expectations uh, during performance reviews uh, after performance reviews at my employer we hold a meeting where the manager reads out the performance letter and while my manager is doing that i am not listening to all the good shit but i am just impatiently waiting for when are you going to tell me what a dirty asshole i am uh, like you know like areas of improvement uh, but yeah uh, that's me that's my personality and i am in an environment called capitalism which especially in our industry seems to thrive on taking new college grads grinding them down and spitting them out to make way for more fresh grist for the mill and those folks are like grinding squeezing apples i guess it looks funny uh whatever it looks really homemade uh, artisanal local capitalism uh <laughs> Well, I'm not saying that the Illuminati are to blame here because it's obviously the majestic 12 y'all come on like uh but no uh it's yeah, it's it's a systemic culture problem in our industry in the world and I feel like I can't just stop at blaming that I think that new grads new hires have a good share of the responsibility to you know have actual lives but it's not all on them because this topic is complex and you can't solve it by saying hey have a work life balance which most people take to mean be physically present at your workplace only 9 to 5 monday to friday that's not work life balance and let me tell you why i think that's not it because i think we are creative workers my work as an sr my work as a pe your work as an sre or sysadmin or whatever your job title is it's all creative work and sure we aren't painting fancy fucking paintings or strumming fucking harps or whatever but we're still creating if you're writing a run book or a script you're creating if you're building automation you're creating something whatever the fuck you do with kubernetes i don't still know uh, i refuse to attend talks on that shit uh, fucking github flavor of the week crap but uh, we are still creating y'all come on we're all creators uh, creativity doesn't flow out of a tap but i get work ideas in the shower and sometimes i even dream about work and i get cool as ideas like this guy a uh, great reference by the way it's benzene and kekule i don't know how to say his name uh, but you know like we are creative workers and there are days when i'm hardcore in the zone great commute great latte whatever the reason but i'm really in the zone as soon as i get into work those are only on some days and there are days when the flow begins only after lunch like i spend the morning browsing facebook and instagram and crap uh, reddit especially uh, but then there are days where i get absolutely nowhere at all and i'm still struggling to learn that it's all okay because my productivity is not consistent but that means taking care of myself is a lot harder because i can't just turn off at 5 o'clock and be like well that said my day at the spoon factory is done uh, i'm a creative worker which means my brain does not respect 9 to 5 monday to friday and i'm 
already at a disadvantage as far as self care is concerned because i work in an open office plan like i'm sure most of you do who here doesn't work in an open office plan really where do you like fuck no i don't want to interview again so no 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 uh, god like if you could just offer me a job and like you know hey any here's here's an offer letter go for it uh, that would be great but uh like open office plans are shitty but uh, my employer has really really good mental health awareness but it still could be better like it could be a whole lot better because people don't really understand mental health and i'm not going to proselytize about the various neurodivergent conditions i have instead i'm going to say that hey i go to ter therapy twice a week now twice a week actually three times if you count couples therapy but uh twice and it's still really hard for me to spot the warning signs of when i'm going to have a breakdown or when i'm like you know hyper focused or distracted or whatever but going to a brain mechanic helps a lot unlike the guy in this fucking thing uh but yeah my employer is amazing i get unlimited sick time i get a great amount of pto i get short term disability which i have used three times to date in three years uh i use my pto and sick time liberally and it's still hard to do but it's important for me to do it because mental health illness is still illness if i'm feeling depressed i take a sick day rather than a pto day and even if i go to a hipster coffee shop or like a record store or whatever it's still a sick day and i'm not like it's still hard for me to accept that i am not playing hooky and having fun because i was brought up to be a cog in the wheel and i'm struggling to not be uh but yeah i want to say self worth is so much more than your job or your skills or whatever you do with kubernetes self worth is important and uh, all of us have internalized capitalism like this great twitter person saying uh if you have done any one of these things at any time you are a little bit infected uh by that disease uh, of capitalism uh but yeah get self worth uh, it's not your job you are more than just being a pe or an sre or a devops or a sysadmin you are a human being and as a human being i just want to throw out there get screened for adult adhd because a lot of us have it a lot of us in this industry are on some spectrum or the other and here's my quick three point quiz for deciding whether you should get screened or not if you have trouble reliably paying bills that are not auto pay set up if you procrastinate hard before deadlines if it's hard for you to start projects or wrap them up even after the tasty bits are done you may have adhd get screened and i said that my employer's great i have a lot of pto i get a lot of sick time all of that but if yours doesn't offer those benefits unionize we live in a society jesus christ man like unions were a big thing here in this country why isn't it so now uh as tech workers we have really high awareness we have really high intelligence and we seem to think that we can solve all of our problems by ourselves individually but guess what you'll burn out that way i have uh it's a great time for me to start talking about help now uh where i'm going to rant about bubble yeah like that's a little bit of an anti climax after capitalism right uh but yeah i'm going to go back to talking about job number 2 uh n minus 1 so that i can rant a little more i had a really amazing tech lead a really great guy uh that tech lead kept all the keys with them uh all of the monitoring and alerting configs were frozen i could not change the priority of any alert uh when i joined the team i was the second pe uh that fellow had been alone for a year and a half and all of the alerts were keyed to go to this person's email address and mobile phone number hard coded not through an alias or anything because they were alone but that meant that i had to break my way in with a sledge hammer or uh, like i should have used that jack nicholson screen grab from the shining but uh like 
I had to struggle to get in and uh, there was also a lot of tribal knowledge where tribe meant this one chap which was so weird like he knew everything but he didn't document it for a year and a half but i my advice is run from such places if you are new to them like if you still can run but i didn't of course not until kara swisher was giving us company news a week before the all hands which was an interesting time uh but yeah i learned how to ask questions the smart way uh, i learned how to unblock myself i was in a crucible at that job and i learned these things the hard way i hope for you that you don't have to learn them the hard way or you didn't have to but i had a few mnemonics that a few heuristics that i used uh, one of them was i would struggle by myself for an hour at most and i would ask well formed questions where i could show that i had cred and i did things so my questions wouldn't be hey can you tell me how to do this rather i looked up how to do this and i found these ways but they didn't work and i found this one wiki that's outdated and deprecated and i found this another thing written by a guy who's an ex employee now but hey do you think this way is good so i asked questions that way because my tech lead did not have the time for other questions sometimes i asked sorry often i asked stupid questions because i learned that every one of us seems to assume hey this question is obvious and obviously everyone knows the answer but me and it would be stupid if i asked it but guess what no one knows and everyone's pretending like they know all of you pretend man what the fuck So I got really good at annoying people and then I got really good at not annoying people because I learned how to ask better questions. I also got better at finding the right forum to ask questions in and unlike my tech lead I decided I am never going to ask questions one on one or in person or in the DM without documenting what the answer was because we need to document all the things just do it. a uh, documentation needs to be kept up to date as well conditions apply but yeah i needed to learn how to get help not just at work because i am assigned male at birth and i deal with being raised in toxic masculinity which is pink and gooey and disgusting and sticky and i hate it but uh, the result of that is it's still really hard for me to talk about some stuff even in therapy it took me years to admit that i was depressed It's still hard for me to use the A word. That's what I call it, abuse. Uh, it's still hard for me to ask for help and feel vulnerable. Even ask my partner for a back rub. It's really hard because I get like, oh, I need to be strong, like Thor or whatever. Like, wait, that's not Thor. That's yeah, that's Thor. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, self care takes different forms. You know, like sometimes you may need the Instagram version, which is you know a bubble bath and a good book. a glass of rosé or whatever and sometimes you need the bro version which is like you know having beers with friends but sometimes you need more than just that shallow self care sometimes you need to go to therapy and sometimes you need to realize that you are more than your career once again you're not just pe's or sres or devops you're human beings and you need to take care of yourselves and each other and i'm going to head to my last topic now which is toes uh I talked a little bit about love and empathy for all humans uh, but no matter what you do even if you live in that kind of a utopian and calm society anarchy anarchistic communistic society no matter what you do your toes are going to get stepped on it's going to happen uh, especially in a tech workplace corporate buzzwords like assume good intent will get thrown at you by virtue signaling assholes people are going to say things like hey annie your depression is making me feel uncomfortable so could you please take sick leave so that you could be sad elsewhere except they're not going to use those words but i guarantee that's their intent ring theory is going to get violated if you don't know what ring theory is it means if i am depressed i get to whine about it to you and then you get to whine about it to other people but not me and so on expanding circles of whining uh, but You don't get to tell me that my anxiety is making you jumpy because fuck you. Uh, you will probably. I didn't take this picture. I found it on R slash a boring dystopia. 
because you know we live in that kind of society you will probably end up feeling gaslit like everything is your fault and everyone else is doing fine but why are you feeling depressed why are you feeling like you did a shit job but guess what that's called shifting the burden on to you and holy shit that sucks like holy fuck man who the fuck does that humans of course because all of us are like a little bit shitty uh but yeah holy shit that sucks it took me so long to learn to trust my feelings and recognize them as valid and resist gaslit gas gaslighting but that led to me learning that i am responsible to serve my own interests and i'm drawing a line between fault and responsibility here it may not have been my fault but it's my fault my responsibility to pick myself up and learning to trust my feelings and recognize them as valid was and ask for help was a much better defense than putting up walls and pretending like my problems didn't exist like that guy from pink floyd's the wall uh, that entire album seems to be about that uh, but you know problems can be fixed but sometimes the fix for you can be don't open that fucking chamber with zombies inside because it says don't dead open inside Sometimes the fix for you can be walking the fuck away and I know it's hard I ranted about job interviews a lot I'm on an H1B visa which means I have 60 days after I quit to find a new job otherwise I get deported to a country where my existence is not recognized as valid but uh back to square one interviewing sucks and sometimes you have to walk away from your job even if it isn't tomeras you got the reference yes excellent uh points for you but you know sometimes even if it's really hard you have to walk away from your job because guess what brand names aren't everything it doesn't matter if your workplace uses the latest cutting edge tech whatever uh loyalty goes both ways sometimes you need to realize that your employers probably not going to be as loyal to you as you are to them and sometimes you need to walk the fuck away when your toes are getting stepped on and everyone else says hey my toes get stepped on only once a year why are you complaining so much walk away but i'm i just put the slide in so that when i upload it you all can read it uh but i'm going to end and uh open q and a for 3 minutes and 17 seconds with this quote from kurt vonnegut and i'm also going to say remember bill and ted's rule because i want to make a double reference double dipping be excellent to one another please and be kind god damn it uh i don't know what kind of questions you may ask but ask i guess and yes if you have questions please do step up to the microphone Ah, thank you. Yeah, I yeah. feel like I just ran from zero to sixty. Uh, but yeah, no. All right, so sweet. Thank you. Looks like uh, no questions. Everybody, please give another round of applause and thank you to Annie.